Hello everybody, good to see you all again. Today we're doing something just a little bit different, a little experiment if you will. I want to see how it goes over with the rest of you. Today we're not going over a specific internet horror story or an SCP or an old urban legend or anything like that. Today we're going over some spooky video game lore. <laughs> now if you like this sort of thing and want me to cover more spooky video game lore, whether it just be about the game we're speaking about today, or any other games, please let me know, and I'll be sure to make more of these. But for now, we are sticking to the Fallout franchise, and something rather creepy, odd, and unnerving that happened inside the doors of Vault 108. Now, if you're new to the Fallout franchise or haven't even heard of it before, basically it is a post-apocalyptic world that primarily centers around its video games, although there are other bits of media such as the Amazon Prime show coming out soon, where basically a war known as the Great War happened, and this was a nuclear war that essentially destroyed the world. However, there were a few vaults in the U.S. where a few people were able to escape and a few people were able to survive throughout the next coming decades and centuries. Now, some of these were control vaults and didn't have anything strange or weird happening with them and people just simply lived and survived in them. However, most of them had secret experiments that were the secret purpose of these vaults done by the company called Vault Tech where they told almost nobody about these experiments especially not the people that they had go into the vaults no and today we are speaking specifically as I said about Vault 108 now 475 people managed to make it to Vault 108 just before the bombs dropped. However, unlike most vaults where the positions were either pre-filled out before anyone even arrived, or they would be decided upon by the staff, or they would be registered beforehand, only four positions in this vault were actually fulfilled upon the people entering, that being the Overseer, which is basically the leader of the vault, the Chief of Staff, the Chief of Security, and the Morale Officer. Now, this was possibly the experiment that the Overseer actually knew about th to see what would happen if these positions weren't filled by default if people were chosen by a specific individual to do a specific job whether they maybe wanted to or not now the vault ran like this for 40 months that's several years after the doors closing but after these 40 months the overseer the leader of the vault died of cancer so that leaves the question who was to be the next one now you see the researchers for this vault specifically chose him as the overseer because they knew he was going to die and this was perhaps the real experiment to see what would happen if the leader who perhaps maybe wronged a few people or had to micromanage everything suddenly disappeared and because he was gone there was no clear line of succession who was to be the next vault overseer nobody knew the answer nobody and nobody knew what to do however many vault people saw a chance they saw a chance to perhaps change their lives get a change in leadership so things could be maybe a bit more fairly maybe some vault people didn't want that though maybe some liked their positions of power maybe some liked the positions they were given and didn't want a change in power or a change in status quo and because of all this this all led to a civil war within the vault now 
we can tell that this was most likely planned and expected by vault tech as the vault has been stocked with three times the amount of weapons and ammunition and such that vaults were typically stocked with because of this massive civil war with all these weapons that people just had such easy access to all it really ended up doing was causing a population shortage within the vault nothing was really able to be changed unfortunately however because of this population shortage and because of the lack of the workforce they now had they had to resort to something that not many other vaults had the capability of doing cloning see the researchers found a cloning machine that the vault had and so they decided to clone who they thought was the most intelligent the most worthy like the most the most well-rounded person that they could get to help fill out any general job that they needed and so they cloned a man named gary however this clone wasn't at all like the gary that they cloned him from he was highly highly aggressive not necessarily physically however he would be angry constantly whenever he saw the researchers he would get aggressive and such and also strangely enough he could only say one word that being his own name gary now this clone was obviously deemed a failure due to his aggression and lack of proper speech so they moved him to the observation room and so they decided that perhaps something went wrong in the cloning process or it was just a simple bad luck of the draw they decided to make another clone however unfortunately just like the first one this clone was once again highly aggressive and could only say his own name so he was also moved to the observation room however curiously enough the clones weren't aggressive towards each other in fact they were quite friendly and even stranger still they could communicate with each other now again they were only saying their own name of gary however the tones would fluctuate as if giving context to how they were talking and it seemed that they could very well easily communicate with each other now this was strange but this didn't quite make the scientists stop as they were determined to fix their population issue so they could hopefully get the vault back on track so they made more clones and more and more and more trying to just simply get something right so they could increase their population but no matter what they did no matter what variable they changed it always ended up the same the clone being highly aggressive and only saying his own name now this continued all the way up until the 54th clone that they made now once again highly aggressive could only say his own name however this one physically showed his aggression as he attacked one of the scientists and this finally got the scientists to give up and stop the cloning process now these vaults while many of them were experiments were designed to legitimately last several decades very long periods of time with no repairs really needed unless something specific went wrong however this vault's power was made to stop after just 20 perhaps part of this experiment as well to see how many things could go wrong with people being able to adjust and the backup generator for this vault could only power part of the vault not the entire thing and one of the places that wasn't fully powered was the observation room where they left all the clones now because of this the garys break out and the remaining citizens of the vault can't defend themselves because all the weapons were used up in the civil war and so many vault dwellers were killed many fleed and many were sealed behind places in the vault never to be opened again in fear for their lives 
seemingly now dead, unfortunately. If anyone did make it out and survive, that's never given to us. Now, 180 years later, when the game Fallout 3 takes place, we can go to this vault, and we see that there are still some Garys around. We don't know how or why this is, as perhaps the cloning process gives you extended life, perhaps. However, they are still able to be killed by small arms, melee weapons, etc. However, another eerie thing can be revealed for those who explore this vault entirely. Inside the cloning lab, there is a Gary studying the corpse of a wastelander. Now, we don't know why that he was doing this. Perhaps he was just simply curious, looking over a body for some reason. Perhaps the clone was getting ready to make it into a food source for him and his fellow clones. Or perhaps they're trying to figure out the cloning process for themselves. After all, after 180 years, we can see that there's actually only 12 clones left alive. Perhaps they're trying to replenish their numbers somehow. We don't know for sure, though. Now, the only other place that we can find another Gary outside of Vault 108 is Gary number 23, who might have been kidnapped by a group called the Outcasts. We don't know if he was kidnapped or he found their signal over a radio or through his Pip-Boy. Again, we're not sure. Now, the outcast did try to use this Gary as a soldier or something. However, they ended up having to kill him because, again, the Garys are only friendly towards each other, and he was highly aggressive. And, unfortunately, that's all we know about this vault. All we know is that the original inhabitants of the vault are long gone by now. And that all that remains are the Garys. And we have no idea what their plans were inside that vault. Or how close they truly were until we came along. But perhaps that is for the best. Now once again, be sure to let me know if you guys like this sort of thing. I'd love to cover more spooky video game lore, whether it be on Fallout or any other video games. So be sure to let me know. And if you like this, I'll be sure to cover more. But until next time...